the topic for today is to discuss regenerative medicine procedures and uh, make us to all understand the possible medical conditions that you know, can be treated. So in other words, the goals of the, today's presentation is to create awareness about regenerative medicine, uh, which is the adult stem cell therapy and platelet rich plasma therapy. I will define those as we go. And by the end of today's presentation, we should understand what medical conditions are treatable as of today. And also, please, I, I, which I will repeat over time, time is of essence when you are trying to consider one of the procedures of regenerative medicine. The earlier, the better, and the less expensive it is. And this regenerative medicine works best for uh, most acute uh, issues. You will find out what I mean as we go. And also, there's a lot of hype around stem cell therapy. Uh, we are not promising cure, but there's always going to be incremental uh, improvement um, that current orthodox medicine may not be able to offer us today. So that's the advantage of the uh, regenerative medicine. In other words, when we say that, um, or when orthodox medicine says it is over, regenerative medicine says it may just be getting started. And most very important, um, as we know, there's now difficulty in even getting visas to travel abroad. So we hope that we can also help to reduce medical tourism, one patient at a time. And by creating this awareness, we want people to understand that there are centers, different centers in Nigeria, where they can get um, regenerative medicine procedures, uh, not only at our center, but what is important is people need to know so that we don't die in ignorance. Knowledge is power. So without further ado, let's get started. Regenerative medicine is a process of replacing, repairing, restoring, or regenerating the human cells back to functioning state, and mainly using the cells or tissue of the body. So in, I like the way um, Mayo Clinic in USA define it as you know, that area of medicine that has the potential to fully heal damaged organs and tissues, offering solutions and hope for people who have conditions that today are beyond um, repair. So what does it comprise? Uh, it comprises platelet-rich plasma therapy. That is when you use the patient's uh, own blood and, and also stem cell therapy. On that stem cell, we have about three fields or three uh, subdivisions. That is embryonic stem cells, which many people, uh, most countries are against for ethical reasons and religious reasons. Then we have the induced pluripotent stem cells, some of which are in research, some are in clinical trial. And then the last but not the least, adult stem cell therapy. Down the road, Today, if I say stem cell therapy can do this clinically, what I mean is adult stem cell therapy, not all the three. So please uh, take note. Uh, what we're gonna be discussing today, again, is PRP and adult stem cell. So I'm gonna start with PRP, then talk about exosomes, which is adult stem cell, under adult stem cell therapy. And then we talk about the fat, bone marrow, and umbilical cord stem cell therapy. So what is PRP or platelet-rich plasma? Uh, it is sometimes referred to as the liquid gold. And you can see on the right upper corner of the screen, um, that's the plasma, it's yellow. So that's where the name came from. And it is from the patient's own blood. It contains stem cells and growth factor. To get stem cells in the blood, to be able to harness it, it has to be processed in a, a proprietary way. Because that's why some PRP people say it works, some say it doesn't work. PRP does work, you will see as we go. And the uh, PRP or platelet rich plasma is that yellow part of the body, uh, um, sorry, yellow part of the blood that has been enriched you know, with um, platelets. 
and can go on average five to 10 times. But if it's well prepared, like I said earlier, it works. If it's only been enriched like two times, the, the standard, the efficacy is very small. And that's why you hear some of your friends saying that PRP works, others will say it does not work. So um, it might, it's important how it is prepared. And the thicker rich plasma contain growth factors and cytokines. These are actually what makes the cells in the body to multiply and make our tissue to regenerate. Of course, adult stem cell does the same, even better than uh, PRP. Uh, many hospitals in USA use um, PRP. It helps the patients to get a better outcome and prevent Let's say the uh, orthopedics, for example, they like it a lot. It helps the healing process and prevent readmission to the hospital. Hospitals and clinics in Nigeria too are also using uh, P uh, PRP. You know, yes, some may not be getting a great result, but I think those ones now are aware that the way the process that PRP has to change, and so that they too can be getting uh, great results. So what happened is that. There's regeneration of the tissues, there's growth and repair that will continue for many months. And the results are permanent, except in some cases whereby if you do not treat the underlying medical condition, even though you get results, so it's gonna be like tug of war, the underlying condition will try to bring things back. Otherwise, uh, you get permanent uh, results. So now let's talk about what you can do with PRP. You can use PRP to treat anything that you can touch physically. Stem cell, you can use to treat both what you can touch physically and what you cannot touch. Like somebody has a stroke, you cannot touch the brain. Somebody has diabetes, you cannot touch the pancreas. In that case, you need adult stem cells to treat those ones. But if you can touch like the joint, like the scalp, like the face, you can use ordinary uh, PRP. And also, I would just like to mention that um, PRP um, is like the basic, while adult stem cell therapy is more uh, um, effective, more aggressive than just uh, the PRP. PRP gain for those joining late is something is the um, uh, growth factors that we get from your blood, which are contained inside the platelets. That's why they call it platelet rich plasma. Now for cosmetic application, you can use it to look younger. For women that have acne, for example, even including men, they can also, if they have acne scars, you can use uh, PRP fascia to you know, uh, lessen the appearance and rejuvenate the skin of the face. You can use for breast lift. Um, it just has, it has uh, medical applications as well. Uh, the first on the list is uh, O-Shot. That is for women um, that have maybe female sexual dysfunction. Uh, some people, because of the age, they are going to menopause, they are in pain, uh, they and their partner uh, cannot enjoy themselves uh, as they used to, or there's lack of desire. O-Shot can restore all those things. And some part of our country in Nigeria, uh, um, female genital mutilation is common, and the, the poor kids have no control. It's only when they get old, then they find out that this was done to them when, as, when they were babies. Um, then PRP therapy can also be used to, you know, uh, to bring things back towards normal. It's good for urinary incontinence. Men are not left out. It's good for premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, peroneal disease. Um, it, um, another medical application is um, uh, hair regrowth. Um, it could, if the hair thin is because of thyroid, you collect, correct the thyroid function as, and then if it's, uh, you, you, you use PRP to promote the growth of the, you know, the air follicles. If it's traction, either from yeah, coast style or whatever, you can also use PRP. 
Another very important area is um, diabetic wounds and um, generally chronic wounds that will not heal. PRP can accelerate the healing process. Orthopedic application is large. That's why orthopedics uh, doctors, uh, they, love, they love it. Um, if people are pain in small joint, medium-sized joint, large joint, neck, back, you know, uh, you can use the PRP to remove those um, pain or lessen them. And uh, this is the first slide of just showing you some PRP uh, P testimonials. This is a patient that on the right corner, uh, right lower corner, you can see there's a problem in the spinal cord. I know some of us are not doctors. Uh, what I circle in the center is the injury. And so patient is paralyzed because of the problem on the spinal cord. Because of that, patient could not move. So patient ended up sitting on his butt and developed a bed sore that will not heal for about a year. So a combination of uh, PRP and uh, SVF was uh, used to treat this patient. And within six days, you can see how it dried out. Within three weeks, there's already healing. And two months later, something that will not heal in one year, you can see it yourself on the screen. Um, this is called PR, uh, vampire fascia. Uh, some people do not want uh, surgery. If they can look younger, new collagen blood vessels. It's not only for Caucasian, like I said earlier, even, uh, you can use for acne, so it's good for um, the Africans as well. Uh, hair loss, men, women, you know. And this is somebody with um, testicular atrophy, shrunk balls. And what happened is that you can see, this is the left um, testicles, which later on was treated. And about 15 months later, you know, it turned to what you can see on the right uh, upper corner of the screen. And then when it, when it was compared to the normal one, which is the right one, the texture are the same, unlike before. And that, of course, in orthodox medicine does not happen. So that's where regenerative medicine comes in to help to regenerate and restore things back to normal. Um, this is a gentleman that was treated in 2017. And uh, when, uh, two months later, uh, when I, uh, we followed up with him, he said that's improvement, you know, and his working is harder and it's good. Uh, probably didn't tell his wife, but 10 months, I'm sorry, nine months later on his own, he just sent a text saying that, you know, um, he's happy with um, um, what is going on in his family. I'm not sure if there are kids uh, also in the background watching this with um, adults, uh, because there's going to be some of the testimony that I may have to read that. So please, let's take note. Uh, this is another patient with uh, diabetics that was uh, treated. So, and Delta on said to have a um, um, P-shot. So we, we did about um, using adult stem cells, about three sessions were done over two years. And um, what happened naturally is that his score uh, increased from 15 to 22. And then he still wanted it to be perfect. It's already back to normal. And so he was treated. The next day, he asked if he could be active. And that's how it was yes. Then, you know, what happened is multiple phone calls the next day. And he sent a text that, you know, the potency is good, it's stronger, it lasts longer. He had us some um, pleasurable uh, experience. And then his uh, condition was restored back to normal. Mind you, before we get excited, this patient already had three sessions of stem cell therapy for his diabetes, which is the underlying cause. That has already been corrected. So the P-shot was just you know, pushing up the clip. That is why within one day, sorry, within two days, he was able to have this result. Otherwise, it takes three months if all you do is PRP. So please keep that in mind. It's not only for women, I mean, for men, 
women too can also benefit for um, sexual dysfunction. And this is a young lady, 31 years old, that came in, um, you know, from Chicago to Tampa, because um, just to have uh, an autistic boy treated. So when we follow up about 16 days later to find out how the boy was doing, he, uh, she went further to tell us about how she too is doing because on arrival, she found out that we do all short. So she said if she could do it, but I'm saying yes. And so our experience was that um, she's been stressed of course because of thinking of the key, lost interest in many things, but it, so 16 days later, she had uh, more lubrication, no more pain, there is urge, there is desire, and the orgasm, of course, was, was stronger, and she feels less stressed. Also, women respond better, faster than men when it comes to the sexual dysfunction. That is just a given, and uh, the men will sometimes may need a repeat treatment, while women, all they need is just one time, and they're good. Um, I believe, um, oh yes, this is the female genital mutilation uh, slides. And um, this is someone who I followed up um, with two months later. Mind you, uh, all short for somebody who's regular and respond fast. In mutilation, things are being cut off. So it's not going to respond as fast as somebody who did not have mutilation. Therefore, she did not respond to me at that two months because she has not seen anything. But later on, three months later, when she started noticing improvement, she sent me a text that there's more sensation and then, and that she has not been uh, with anyone yet. So you couldn't tell of the full uh, effect. Then four and a half months later, when uh, I try to follow up if there's an additional improvement, he said yes, that she can confirm that our current levels of sensation are better than when she first received the treatment. And even since the last month that I followed up with her, so she started having improvement. Then 10 months later, when I followed up, uh, she also had treatment for her neck, her knee, as well as OSHA, so she now decided to tell me all the stories. But what is important right now is the uh, OSHA for the female um, genital mutilation. So I'm going to rush over the uh, testimony so that we can understand what she went through. So I'm going, hopefully we can read the right side of the screen, but you can read with me. I was partially circumcised as a baby and was only rescued from a full mutilation because my mother rescued me free from the perpetrators to the full-fledged um, anger of her in-laws. She didn't care. She ran away with her baby girl, but the work had been partly done. Fast forward 36 years, and having suffered from vaginism, uh, vaginism, enjoying sexual relationships with my husband was something I never fully experienced. I couldn't feel anything, and so could not experience the pleasures of the uh, intimacy, I had a cause of the ocean, and in three months, I started to notice significant improvements in having sensations, even in the normal course of the day, that is not even without activity. The nerves endings were growing, and she could now you know, uh, uh, feel what she never felt for 36 years. And she's thankful, very thankful, and um, she was able to provide, that we're able to provide a service that allows her enjoy a level of intimacy and pleasure in her lifetime. So that's for someone who has didn't enjoy their marriage initially, that believe that's a break, breakthrough that orthodox medicine cannot offer. So just trying to show you that there's hope with regenerative medicine. And this 87 year old lady with arthritis, um, who came in, uh, we treated her with PRP. And then um, I saw her three months later in uh, Lagos, Ikeja, and um, she came in with wheelchair. And three months later, no cane, no wheelchair. She walked to the exam room. And then later on, the, about nine months, the, one of the 
the children sent me a text just to say uh, thank you. And this is someone with 72 year old with back pain. I know most of us uh, are not uh, medical uh, experts, but on the right side, the same array, in that circle, I mean, you can see from the top, things are smooth, they start getting worse here, and then you see this is really bad there. So she has uh, back pain, and uh, when it is narrowed, the spinal canal, we call it lumbar uh, spinal stenosis at that level. Um, she has back pain. Um, this lumbar spondylosis is when you have arthritis with age. Uh, Arthrodysthesis uh, means the one bone is sliding forward over the other, which is what you can see here. And then, of course, the pain goes down her legs. That's what those diagnoses mean for the non-doctors. So in summary, uh, two days later, we followed up, how are you doing? She said she has already noticing some improvement. And then when we asked her to quantify it, she said that her pain was seven over 10 before, two days later, uh, it has dropped down to five over 10. And then 25 days later, dropped down to two, 32 days later, dropped down to 1.5, uh, 1 you know, so she, she was happy. And then six weeks, 1.2, gradual improvement. Remember, this is only PRP. And then by seven weeks, um, one over 10, by three months later, you know, she was pain-free with occasional um, zero, um, zero to one episode. If it is stem cell, which we see some later, the result is uh, uh, faster. So again, orthopedics uh, applications are huge. Um, if somebody has a, a diagnosis of um, back pain or they have facet atropathy, they've seen it on their medical record, they, something like this can help. Or you can talk to your doctor. If they offer the procedure, uh, it will help you. Arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, rotator cuff tear, um, ligaments in the knees, that's the ACL, PCLS if they are torn, especially the partially torn without surgery, it can be reconnected. If you have pain at the bottom of your foot, plantar fasciitis is very good. It helps to eradicate that instead of using um, uh, steroid. So pretty much any joint that your doctor is putting steroid, which eventually damages the joint, it's better to use one of the procedures of regenerative medicine. Not only does it take care of the pain, the inflammation, it regenerates. Steroid doesn't do that. Steroid only damage. It will help the joint, reduce the inflammation at that moment. Then you come back again, maybe two, three months. And then a year later, you are being asked to get knee replacement or hip replacement. Oh, by the way, which you will see one um, down the road. So uh, exosomes. Um, We've, we've spoken about PRP. Exosome is next, which is under adult stem cell therapy. Uh, exosomes are just you know, tiny particles. They are very small um, uh, secretory, secretory uh, packets that control the stem cell communication. They don't have any nucleus in them. And so, but they play a very important role in cell to cell communication and cell signaling when it comes to adult stem cell therapy. So these are the exosomes. You know, a whole cell, you can see it on the right side, it has nucleus, but exosomes do not have nucleus. So they are very tiny, but they have all the information you need, you know, for the stem cell therapy, or the mRNA and the, the RNAs. So DNA is not needed for stem cell therapy. And these are um, testimonials uh, for people that have had exosome treatment. Uh, all of us that are in Africa, we are skin type six. Uh, this is a South American uh, patient who is also uh, type, C, uh, type six. Um, second degree bone. In orthodox medicine, yes, we put the uh, bone cream and dressing and all those things, but you still be left with scar. Seven days clean, two months, no scarring. That's only possible with regenerative medicine, not orthodox medicine. This is another exosome, uh, another patient treated with uh, exosome. There's perforation by the cutting board. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be cleaning our head canal with that. But in this case, there was accidental perforation of the, 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 the tympanic membrane, which is the head drum. And then 
three days later, the patient had uh, exosome treatment. And then something that's supposed to close in average of four to six months, it closed in three weeks. Then four weeks later, picture was taken, and you can see how it has closed up nicely. There is no trace of any scarring. You know, that's another thing. Other stem cell therapy prevents scarring. So like somebody that's a keloid, you know, you have surgery, you can also inject uh, exosomes after the surgery. And then 10 months later, crystal clear, as if nothing ever happened. So we can also use for diabetic patients. And this is somebody within six weeks of getting um, um, exosome treatment, the hemoglobin A1C, dropped from 10.5% 10, 10 to 6.52% in less than two months. And if you notice at the top, uh, the patient was only diagnosed four months earlier than the treatment. Exosome works very, very well for acute problem, stroke, diabetes, air perforation that I showed you, the facial skin bone. So, um, again, like I said earlier, the earlier, the better, and the better result you get when you want to use any of the preventive medicine procedures. Please let us take note of that. No need to procrastinate. Um, this is the patient that um, is treat, was treated in America that uh, the mother came and treated with, uh, with an old shot. So that's uh, 16 days later that we tried to find out uh, how the three and a half year old boy with autism was doing. The mother said, uh, he's more calm, willing to listen. In, he's better with his emotions. He hugs his little brothers. Good morning. Uh, and these are things he never did before. This speech therapist said that he has better understanding and he's trying to make some sounds that sounded like words. He was able to match puzzles all day by himself without uh, any help. And then six weeks later, we followed up. And then the mother said there's still much progress uh, going on, although not, uh, though he is not yet there. And then she also said that he's trying to say some words. It doesn't come out right, but at least he is trying. And that he doesn't do before. Now he can pronounce at least 15 alphabet sounds. And before, you could never even get a aim to. So I, I, I mean, you can never get him to repeat or pronounce uh, any, anything. So um, we've spoken about PRP, we've, um, we've spoken about uh, exosomes. Now we are going to talk about fat, bone marrow, and implicable stem cells. Or let me say, we're going to talk about adult stem cell therapy. Now, remember, um, PRP, is from your own blood. These are platelets that have growth factors inside. Exosomes, even though it's under stem cell therapy, they are extracted from cells. They are not cells. But now we're going to be talking about cells. We're going to be talking about adult stem cell therapy. And what is a stem cell? A stem cell is any cell that can multiply or differentiate. All of us online, we came from one ovum that is fertilized by a, by you know um, a sperm, and that's one cell is what turned to all of us and differentiate to our head, our leg, our you know stomach and in, uh, lungs and so on. So that is what a stem cell is. Um, there are three major uh, types of stem cells. The embryonic, and that's the first one that came out, and it's the most powerful, and it has this pluripotent. Um, characteristics, but it is considered unethical because it involves uh, potential human beings, which we, they get from the scientists get from IVF clinics. So religious group and some countries are against it. Now, because of the power, the uh, pluripotent power, the scientists now went further and decided to create induced pluripotent stem cells, whereby they take the uh, uh, mature cells like your skin or white blood cells um, and they reprogram it or they culture it. So it has the same power like embryonic stem cells, but it doesn't have the ethical issue. 
So some of it are already in clinical trials, while some are still in uh, research preclinical stages. What we're going to be talking about is uh, this evening is adult stem cells. Again, if I say um, stem cells, I'm technically re referring to adult uh, stem cells. And that's the cells from any individual that um, has been fully matured, um, is of any age. That is why umbilical cord stem cells is under adult stem cell therapy. And it can also uh, be from the bone marrow or fat in our stomach. A lot of uh, uh, clinical trials have been done. This is considered safe. So that is why we're able to use it clinically today in America and as well as the rest of the world, including uh, uh, Nigeria. How do they work? They work by paracrine effect. That is cell to cell communication. In other words, they do not know why you are transplanting it or why the doctor is transplanting to the client. What happens is that once they are flowing in the body, the area of inflammation, either acute or chronic, attracts these stem cells. They are so called receptor, uh, you know, uh, on all these abnormal cells. And there's a signal that drives the stem cell towards the, them. Um, we also call it like a homing. Home, like the birds flying, you know, going home. So the stem cells get attracted to the damaged part of the body and they make those area of the body that is damaged to multiply and start repairing themselves. Naturally, we are created to repair ourselves. That's how God created us. But the stem cells accelerate that healing process. So some that's supposed to take maybe nine months might just take three months or three weeks. And you don't have to deal with it. And then you can even prevent some complications of somebody having acute stroke. Yes, we can recover, and some may be left with uh, numbness or tingling or weakness for many years or the rest of their life. If you address that acute stroke in the acute stage, one treatment is all you need. You can stop all these complications and get the person back on their feet. And I think there's a video, um, a one minute, two minute video on that. So let me keep moving. And then they'll be happy. So in other words, regardless, of the number of conditions that is treatable in that patient, the stem cell do not know why you are treating the patient. Everything gets treated once trans, uh, transplanted. And the sources are the fat in the stomach, your bone marrow, or umbilical cord stem cells. None of us on the line can use our own umbilical cord. Although the kids born today, their umbilical cord blood are being stored. And um, if any of us needs to use the blood glucose stem cells, which do not cause any immune problem, we have to get it from uh, another uh, person, from a donor. So anyway, there's tissue degeneration. Yes, you can use either stem cell therapy. And even some conditions that you've not known that they are still just starting, it will calm everything down. So that's why it's good for anti-aging. I mean, of course, it has its limitation. It's not the answer to everything. You break your bone, you need to get orthopedic doctor to realign that um, bone. Yes, you can still use PRP or stem cell to accelerate, to shorten the duration of the healing process of the broken bone. But you, that is not the first thing you do when you break your bone. You go and say, doctor, if you have a pneumonia, you have malaria, you still have to go and say, doctor. So it is not the answer to everything. Of course, it is offering hope for conditions that before we thought could not be treated and they are now treatable. We've been saying regenerative medicine, but the scientists found out that autoimmune disorders respond a lot to regenerative medicine procedures. So things like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Crohn's disease, autism, multiple sclerosis, even chronic fatigue, it, it helps. It helps for type one and type two diabetes. Uh, uh, for the heart condition, two conditions are the ones that it is known for. The heart attack, if somebody has attack, heart attack, MI, it means a section of the heart tissue was deprived of oxygen and is dying. The stem cell therapy can help to repair, regenerate that heart muscle. Or heart failure, that means they can't pump um, enough blood around the body anymore. 
it helps to modulate, uh, regenerate the heart tissue and the heart gets stronger over time. Lung condition as well. Stroke, I've been using stroke uh, as example a lot because that's where we get probably one of the best places to get the wow effect, especially the acute stroke. Once there is acute stroke, you don't start looking for regenerative medicine center. Take them to the nearest hospital. Let that person be stabilized. You know, within three, five days, everything has been, tests has been done, blood pressure controlled, whatever is causing it has been addressed. Then other stem cell therapy can be done while they are in the hospital or after discharge. What is important is it needs to be addressed immediately within one to three weeks so that that person can only have just one treatment and fully recovered. For old stroke, two years, five years, three years, yes, it too will get improvement, but mind you, at this point, part of the brain is dead. So you can no, no, no perform magic. You have to start, grow new brain cells, they grow, then they differentiate to perform the function of the one that is dead. That's gonna take time. That's gonna take time. It's gonna take multiple sessions. Of course, it becomes more expensive. That is why the earlier, the better. Cerebral palsy um, is stroke in kids. So um, that one too uh, we, uh, can be treated. Um, we've done some, some people, kids that cannot walk uh, they start uh, walking. We've done we treated them at our centers in Nigeria, you know. So it's a possibility. We've spoken about male and female sexual function already. Arthritis, I think uh, we mentioned that already, low back pain, neck pain. Um, some conditions like uh, motor neuron disorder that is technically considered death sentence, you can prolong people's life. You can stop the deterioration because once you are diagnosed with MND or ALS, you just keep going down. But with stem cells, you can abort it. Hands are not moving for two years, they start moving. Legs are not moving, they start moving. But again, you also need more than one treatment session. So developmental uh, delay in children, spinal cord injury, if, it's, if you get it addressed quickly, somebody that is paralyzed, you can, you know, within some months, get them back. If the spinal cord is injury is old, again, it will take longer time and multiple treatment sessions. Please, again, remember time is of essence. Anti-aging, if there's nothing wrong with you, Great, but you cannot be as agile. You cannot, I mean, you cannot be as um, functional as you were when you were 30s and 40s. So something is already deteriorating, wearing off in the body. Stem cell therapy, adult stem cell therapy does not know why you are giving it. Once it's transplanted, it repairs and rejuvenates the whole body. We all go to die one day, whether we like it or not. Okay, I know it's a different topic of what is going on, how you can prolong your life. And uh, that is for future. But as of today, it's no fact that we are going to die at one day. But you may want to die in good quality or uh, I mean, in good condition. Okay, and then, you know, people get uh, anti-aging treatment. Some, depending on their condition, once a year, some once every two years, some every six months, your choice. Uh, sexual function, restoring relationship in marriages, um, you, you know, that has been discussed. Now, the question in mind of some of us is, is this safe or not? It depends on what you are talking about. If you are talking about the embryonic, the answer is no. That's why many uh, companies are, uh, many countries are against it. And if you talk about induced pluripotent, the answer is yes and no. Why? Because the scientists now, it used to be no. The scientists now believe they can make it safe. So they've started clinical trial in human beings. But adult stem cell therapy, that has been going on for donkey years. A good example is a bone marrow transplant since 1968. You know, um, we just didn't call it stem cell therapy um, then. Uh, people take fat in their stomach, put it in their lips, in their face, in their butt. There's what they call um, the Brazilian butt lift. I think that is very common in Nigeria. So it's your own body part. You, it's, you, can't, you cannot go wrong. Um, so it is, that size, yes, it is safe. Now, this is a table also addressing the safety. On the left is uh, embryonic, induced prepotent in the middle. On the right is adult stem cell therapy, which is one that is safe, and that is called somatic stem cells. So it's the same thing. And the reason 
Um, why they are safe is because for the two left columns, they are very powerful, pluripotent, but there's a limitation to the other stem cell. That's why I say they are multipotent, not as powerful as the other, uh, the other two. Um, the other two can cause chimeras. Uh, other stem cells cannot cause any form of chimeras. The um, embryonic and the dyspropotent, um, they have, um, and they just keep self renewing. There's no limitation. Now, the other stem cell therapy has limited self renewal. That limitation is actually what made it to be safe. So it doesn't allow it to continue to renew and multiply. That's what makes other stem cell safe. Uh, so um, they have limited lifespan, unlike the other two that is indefinite. So these are things that make it safe. They don't cause uh, no cancer. The other two, you know, may cause uh, cancer. So again, other stem cell therapy is what is clinically safe. It has been proven to be safe. If anybody is uh, in the medical field or is very curious about science, please take a screenshot, go to www.nih.gov. It's the best website, it's a US website uh, for um, National Institute of uh, Health. Um, you type in whatever you want. Add the stem cell therapy for, you know, any condition that comes to your mind. You, you get articles, things to convince you if it is uh, possible. Whatever, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, just tap it in there. So now um, I've spoken about all the three types of uh, adult stem cell therapy and PRP. I'm not just going to do some testimony. These are patients that have been treated either in US or Nigeria. Uh, the, uh, the first patient, uh, was treated. This patient was treated in um, I believe 2018. Um, yes, 2018. Patient has neck pain, low back pain. You can also see some scoliosis uh, there, and then um, some disc bulge, you know, on the left side. So, but when we followed up. It, for the multiple pain conditions, um, two, two days after, uh, sorry, 12 days, 12 days after, and they said there's about 80% improvement, significant improvement, tremendous improvement, and uh, it's a, uh, mom is without back pain. But the reason why I'm showing this slide is that when they came for consultation and during the treatment, they never mentioned anything about the dry high condition. During the follow-up, they said she also had severe dry eye problems to where she would wake up many times for drops. Since, the, since this procedure, 12 days later, she has noticed no problems with the heart, with the eyes. And like I said earlier, it doesn't know your diagnosis. The, the, the stem cell just go around, and where there's a problem, it fixes it, period. And this is... Um, and a um, patient with neck pain, also treated in uh, 2018. Um, this both at the Tampa office, even had surgery. I was still having pain. So two days later, we, we followed up. This patient did triple dose fat stem cells. And how are you doing? He said the neck pain and the hand pain are gone, feeling good, but the Crohn's disease was iffy, but no pain. In other words, the patient doesn't know if his autoimmune condition is going to be benefited by treatment he had, even though he stopped having pain. So, you know, okay, like I said earlier, on average, it takes three months, even sometimes six months in some people to get results. And some people earlier than that. The next thing is five days later, it sent me this long list. The body pain gone, craving gone, no depression, motivation good, sexual life improved, sleep improved, and uh, hair growing, no side effects and uh, no more headache, no more habit of nail uh, biting, you know. So that, that, that is uh, what he said. Now, I like this uh, case because it's uh, one of our cases that are gonna be 
um, uh, publishing, uh, writing article to publish soon. Uh, this patient was um, treated for the left, or well, the patient has arthritis of the two knees. And then they came to the US. Uh, she was treated in 2019 um, with left knee replacement and also told to get knee replacement for the right, but uh, she refused, you know. And the, you know, she was having arthritis, getting steroid. Like I said again, I'm not a friend of steroid. There's nothing wrong, they help you, but on the long run, the damage is just not, not worth it, you know. Then all we had was steroid to help the patient. So there's nothing wrong, that's all we need. But now, from 2017, continue to get steroid, you can see how the left was messed up by 2019. And then what happened? She ended up getting total hip replacement. Then the, the left also get, got worse, but she refused to get two hip replacement at the same time. So this x-ray was taken three days before we treated her. And then two days later, our pain went from uh, now about 10 to three, three weeks later from three to two, about um, 51 days later, two to one, by three months pain-free. And she's pain-free up to today. And what happened right in front of you? This is three days before X-ray. And you can see it's the same patient. You can see that, you know. These are all the arthritis and it started improving. And then here yeah, you can barely see any space by six months, there's already space in between the, you know, the two bones. I hope you can see that on your, and then, so putting them close to each other, you can see the improvement, you know. And then of course, all the cysts are gone. 10 months later, you can see, you know, better, more spacing. And then 14 months later, it has gone from this to this. In orthodox medicine, this does not happen. The treatment is total hip replacement. But regenerative medicine can regenerate. So if anybody tell you that it doesn't work, you don't need to be a doctor. You can see with your two naked eyes, it's the same patient. You can, you know, so that is that. This is just comparing the progress. Again, it's continual improvement, gradual improvement. Going, you know, for every, um, for different conditions, like acute stroke, you resolve it immediately. This is an old arthritis that got worse to this point before you know we started treating. And then it cannot, even though the pain is gone within three months, you the regeneration is still going to continue. So these are other patients. Um, I'm trying to watch time, sorry. So to see how much time we have. I have to keep this less than an hour so that we can have question and answers session. Um, this is a patient with diabetics, uh, high blood pressure, who was taking ibuprofen and then the kidney got damaged and then for 15 years, patient has been on dialysis. So, I um, mean, all this I'm going to repeat because you may not be able to see it. So looking at the right side. So um, we follow up um, three days later, the patient responded four days later, you know, and said that um, the first thing he said that his skin, um, was well, seems smoother than the previous rough skin that he has because of his kidney condition. I was able to read newspaper clearly without glasses the next day. He slept very well. Most of our patients sleep very well and the sleep pattern, you know, um, improve. So if you having problems sleeping and your doctor has tried all medications, it's not working, ask your doctor if they can treat you with one of the yes medicine procedure. It will help you, you know, wherever part of the world you are working from. So these two texture improved, you know. Nine days later, I said that um, normally yeah, it takes a, a nine days, it didn't have dialysis and the creatinine level only went up by just two level, you know. So normally that doesn't happen um, to him. So when he went back for dialysis nine days later, his blood pressure was fantastic throughout dialysis. First time ever in 15 years, you know. So this is the, another screenshot of his testimony. And what did that say? He said his blood uh, sugar uh, have become very normal, but 
he now even skipped the drug so that the sugar and blood pressure did not become too low. He registered 100 over 60, 90 over 50. So his blood pressure medication had to be adjusted uh, uh, down. And then, of course, the skin scales have long gone immediately after the stem cell. By five, uh, almost six months uh, later, he stopped blood transfusion because uh, his uh, PCV was getting above uh, 40, and then uh, it was also getting epogen injection. So they have to stop epogen injection too, because they said it was getting too high for his dial dialyzer. So that's the kidney was functioning better. So I now went ahead and because the total body regeneration, remember he had a complaint of ED, but we did not do p -shot. So I now ask him, what about your uh, sexual function? He said, quite frankly, the sexual function had improved despite his kidney condition. Um, the reason why that happened is again, the total body regeneration. So the brain was made to produce more testosterone, which now makes the boss to produce the, you know, um, uh, more testosterone because the brain releases the hormone that stimulates the boss to produce uh, testosterone. So that is a uh, total body regeneration example um, again. This is a patient with um, back pain that was um, treated, I think, uh, October 1, uh, some years um, ago, in 2018. So when we, the next day, uh, when I sent a text to find out how it was doing, he said, yes, he was able to sleep on the right side, you know, without the usual severe, severe pain that normally woke him up. And then four days later, you know, he said the sleep is deeper and longer and feel more refreshed than before when he wakes up. And I said, okay, uh, what about the pain level? He said, that's Tremendous, it has tremendously reduced. It has gone in four days from 7.5 to 2.5. And 12 days later, we said uh, this, um, okay, said it was, it was traveling and it, it, do not feel, it did not feel any pain in its lower back or both hips again, you know. So to, mind you, it got fat. I told you, about a lady before that, you know, I think uh, seven, six weeks, seven weeks, we are still one over 10. And this is 12 days at zero. There's a difference between PRP and other stem cells. PRP is like the basic entrance. I, I like to use cartridge explain sometimes. PRP is like, let's say, Toyota Corolla, why uh, fat or other stem cell is more like the uh, faster cars, you know, or even like the airplane. So four weeks later, um, you know, when I asked him, okay, your pain has gone from uh, 7.5 down to zero. Is there any other changes that you have started noticing? Is, you know, so the, that's when I said he couldn't stand for more than 15 minutes at a time before. It, but it was that same day now that I just accidentally followed up, I was able to deliver two papers. And he stood for one hour and two hours, respectively. And then verbally, only to find out later when he went to US, he drove eight hours, no, no, uh, nonstop, because he traveled from Nigeria to US after that procedure. And he couldn't sit long or stand long. And he was able to drive that you know, on the road. So he's doing well, he's pain free. Uh, this next patient is um, another patient that went from Nigeria to US. They offered total knee replacement you know, on the left because you can see the bone on bone arthritis. She refused. She wanted uh, not to do surgery. So she found out about the procedure. So instead of doing surgery, her pain was six, uh, six on the right and seven over 10 on the left. Um, 11 days later, that reduced on the left to four from seven, and then on the right from six, it reduced to three. About five weeks later, it further reduced down to three, you know, uh, and two. And the, the, so she was happy that she did not get a um, uh, new replacement. Uh, we already spoke about this lady, I'm sorry, about this gentleman that had um, um, improvement in his um, performance after having a piece shot when you already had three sessions of stem cells. Um, we already spoke about this before, 
Um, I wrote an article about the non-healing wound, the Nigerian patient. I submitted it in 2018, and it was accepted by the uh, Journal of Medical Cases. They publish it, you know, um, where they discuss this. Now, this is the stroke patient. Um, I think a couple of minutes left. Uh, this is a stroke patient. Um, Uh, the patient um, could not speak, uh, could not talk. So five days, late, five days later, we went into the hospital, we treated her, and then what happened was that, um, let me fast forward it. Uh, the, one, the next day, she started in her hand, as you can see, and she also started talking. And then, um, that's the leg, you can move that, you can see that. Then the three, She's already bending more. Day 24, she's able to raise the leg during physiotherapy very well. And she's able to walk without a cane. Pretty, she can start walking. And three days later, you know, walking freely. She only had one picture. And then by two months, the daughter went to visit her. She was like walking faster than the daughter. And the daughter's like, oh, it's because of your grandbaby. So that's just to show that the life can be restored. That somebody couldn't move, couldn't speak. Now, this is another patient um, that had a stroke at the back of the brain, three weeks old, and um, affected the, the, the vision, the, the headache. Pinion was treated, but uh, 14 hours later, half of the symptoms were, were gone. By three months later, everything was gone. The reason I'm showing is that we treated the patient for stroke, but look at the diabetic hemoglobin A1C. It went from 6.7 in two months to 4.04. Again, stem cells, other stem cells just don't know why you're getting treatment. Anyway, there's a problem um, uh, if we try and repair the, the, the issue. I know many people on the line, different conditions. Um, of course, we have many cases. So I'm just trying to show uh, sample of um, as much as we can. Of course, we don't live here today. If, if I have to touch everybody's case, but it's just hopefully the concept is is clear. Um, this is somebody with a that was a non bleeding stroke. This one is a bleeding stroke, and then uh, and twelve days later is when they contacted us. Patient could not recognize the husband. Then uh, twelve days later after the treatment. And now contacted the, uh, the husband. He said the wife was able to recognize uh, people, including him. And then I was able to walk a little bit, and you know, hopeful. I will, um, hopeful that there'll be more than that. This is somebody, some five years old, back pain. Um, only then they came to walk around. And I told him three days later, sent me this that you know, how she's able to stand up upright better without. Uh, you know, walking around with a cane. And then three months later, she sent me this video uh, from my location in uh, Akure, I was in the US. So I'm going to fast forward it. Uh, well, anyway, that's before the treatment at our center. This is our center in uh, Lekki. We take the baseline of what they can do. And then a uh, few hours after, she was already doing better. The next day, uh, she slept soundly again. Everybody sleeps very well. So let's uh, keep that in mind. And then the, he said the pains are gone. But let me fast forward it. So, so three days later, I, I, I need to fast forward that. Uh, sorry for the yes, better now. Okay. So three days later, you know, she's already said that she's doing better. No more pain, the Botox. Oh. All right. I just want to show you a section. I can't fast forward the way I want. Yes, this is where I want you to see. Look at the angle at which she stood up. 
So she sent me this video on herself. She has the back and uh, terrible back. I am. Um, I mean, the the, the mild party is really serious and without pain and continuing gradual improvements. Okay, so um, this is somebody who's paralyzed. This is on our so, uh, social media website. Um, I'm going to play it while I talk. Um, patient was shaking every, uh, first of all, he was having a jack movement. And by two days later, instead of every 10 minutes, he only had two by the evening. You can see nine months later, let me show that we didn't miss that. Let me go back. Two days later, I was moving his hand. Nine months later, this is a patient that has not been able to move his hand or leg for two years because he had a spinal cord injury and they crushed his head on the floor. The neurosurgeon saved his life and they did the compression surgery. So, but he remains paralyzed for two years. We got involved and then started moving. And then from the, then that uh, slow movement to faster movement and then it, Okay, if you notice the speed on the left, it's a little bit moving faster. And if you not turn him, he was able to turn himself backwards. You know, so the junction was going down. These are cases that I'm saying, if you bring such cases to a center where they can offer regenerative medicine, um, the patient will be able to walk by, by two years, you know, so. This is autism because of time. There are so many uh, testimonial on autism. I just stand that happy person with the, you know, that's from UK. Um, let me just keep going. I'm not going to, okay, this is a one minute video. So I'm going to keep quiet. Um, this, this kid uh, could not follow instruction uh, properly, but later on was able to. Uh, let's see. Juice? Yes. Water? Juice? Water? Juice? Water? Orange juice? Water? Juice? Orange juice? Juice? Water? Juice? This is before treatment. Now, after water. Treatment, we see what you can do. Juice. Water. Water. Juice. Water. Water. Juice. Water. Juice. Water. Juice. Water. Water. Okay. I've been doing that. So, then at uh, 20 weeks, you know, um, when we follow up, um, the mother was happy because she was able to call mommy out, was able to ask and point his hand to morphine that uh, he, he wanted. So the improvement is continuing. You know? So pretty much uh, that's all the testimonies. And just for those that may be wondering uh, if the internet is available at our center, um, yes. Uh, we have a U.S. protocol for weight loss. We have shockwave therapy. Uh, we have MESPA, anesthetic services, cosmetic, primary care. So we just don't dump you. If, you know, we make sure that you know you are well. And of course, we offer regenerative medicine, which is why we're online today. But for those that don't know what shockwave therapy is, this is what it is. So it's just in a probe, sending uh, sand waves to regenerate or stimulate the healing process in the body and reduce the um, uh, inflammation. So this patient uh, that's been treated um, had, um, uh, what do you call it, back pain for about three years, x-ray, everything been done, uh, no pathology found. And um, before the treatment was, eight over 10, a month later, it was five. Then about five months later, when I follow up, uh, you know, about the pain, the patient said, oh, if not that you reminded me about me having back ache, 
I would not have remembered I had one. So, all right. And then this is another one neck pain. Uh, who had a fall? And uh, I think for about uh, five days. And then uh, the next day, yeah, um, said 95% uh, gone. And for those that are raising their, your hands, we know that you are raising your hands. We are almost done. We will get to you. And um, when I asked the patient to quantify uh, the next day, it went from 7 over 10 to 1.5. So pretty much um, that is our presentation. And I have one more uh, testimonial of um, one of us who is attending, who wants to, uh, you know, share her own testimonial life. But it's, just, it's not just about her treatment. I think she has something to say. So I'm going to give her the opportunity to speak. And uh, let me see. Uh, the, OK, that is it. Over to you. Can you see me? Can you hear yes. Me? <laughs> yes. Hello, um, my name is Rebecca Obayitin, and um, I am a recent patient of Dr. Ecodiocese. And I actually asked him if I could be here um, to share a little bit of my story today, just because when I experience something really great or truly believe in something, I am compelled to share it. So. Um, just a little bit about who I am. I am American and uh, have lived in the U.S. for almost my entire life. Um, 22 years ago, I met a handsome prince, a Nigerian prince in Philadelphia, of all places. <laughs> and um, at the time, I didn't know exactly what that meant. But as fate had it, um, he swept me off my feet, took me to his village. And since I did not run away, he married me in a traditional ceremony there. So the rest is a uh, kind of history, but we did um, continue to live in the US, mostly in Tampa Bay and Orlando. Um, so my background is in exercise science. I've always been fascinated by science and kept up with you know, what's happening um, with cutting edge things. And um, I owe a lot in my life to medical science. Um, when we were trying to have children, we ended up um, turning to IVF and I researched, you know, the, the latest techniques and the best doctors that were out there and kind of found my way through that. And anybody who's been through it knows the financial and emotional and physical toll it can take on someone. Um, but ended up having a success story there. But the day that I found out I was pregnant, I also had to go in for a biopsy um, I discovered that um, I had a cancerous lesion in my tongue. So once again, I started my research and needed to find, you know, what was the best thing I could do and who should do it because I needed to make sure that I had a healthy pregnancy. That was my top priority. So, so through that, I mean, it's a success, a success story. Um, I was able to have surgery, continued on with a fantastic pregnancy and, um, had twins actually. So I have my boy and girl and, um, and life is grand. But um, a few years ago, when I started hearing more about stem cell and the therapies that were available, I, I just was intrigued. Um, started doing more research. I didn't have a specific application for myself at the time, but I was just really um, driven to find out more about it. And in my research, I found, you know, one of the top doctors, uh, world renowned um, around the world was Dr. Epidiasi. And um, full disclosure, I knew him, he wasn't a close friend, but definitely um, a medical colleague of my husband's and um, a friend um, from Tampa, it's a close knit Nigerian community there. So we did know each other. So I just started following his work a little more closely um, at that point. So fast forward to uh, this year, my husband was appointed a, a position here in Nigeria. So I'm now coming to you from Lagos. And um, as I became more interested in some of the anti-aging and PRP therapies um, that I was seeing with Dr. Ikudayasi, I was excited to learn that he was here in Lagos as well as Tampa, my two home bases. So um, 
So I contacted him uh, just a couple of months ago. He can probably share with you more the dates, but I contacted him. And just because of my travel schedule, we found it best to meet in Tampa. So I went to see him, had my consultation, got all the information that I needed. My main concern was I did not want to change my face. I didn't want to change how I looked. I was under strict orders from my husband as well. Like, do not change how you look. I love your face. Um, but I love that this is natural and using your own blood. And um, it's more of a preventative thing. Um, for me, it was just I wanted to really dive into my skincare and make sure that I was doing the best things for my skin, starting to notice some wrinkles that I didn't um, really care for. But again, with that said, I also didn't want to change my appearance. So got the information I needed and uh, within a couple of days went in for the procedure. So um, that's kind of my approach. I just, I don't waste time. And you've heard the doctor say it a couple of times through the presentation. I think, um, you know, financially and medically, there's reasons not to wait. And I think even from a quality of life standpoint, that's really my drive um, back to my story of how I got my family and the medical diagnosis I had through, through that. I just, it was a turning point for me and I just decided that I don't have time to waste and I'm going to live my best. And I think that always comes back, you know, if you're feeling your best, whether it's, you know, regrowing your hair or whether it's walking again. I mean, these stories that you tell are incredible. I'm blown away. I've, I've seen this presentation once before, but I'm again blown away just by the gravity of the work that you do. Um, but I have to say that it can be anything from anti-aging skincare to, again, get regaining the use of a limb to having a better sex life. I mean, once you are living your best, that just comes through in every aspect of your life. And you're ultimately going to be more successful in your everyday life. So, you know, I've over the years, I'm sure everybody, we've spent thousands of dollars on you know insurance, health insurance, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, there's definitely applications for that and there's a place for it, but I've never been one to sit back and wait for the insurance company to tell me what they're going to cover and what the best treatment for me is. I kind of work with a doctor that I trust and move forward because time is of the essence. So that's my, that's my message and my testimony. Um, I did have PRP uh, therapy, which the doctor can tell you a little bit more about. I did have the exosomes. Um, I had really no downtime. I did not look very good right after, but I was still able to see my children who are eight years old now, um, still able to see them and see a girlfriend, you know, really with just an explanation of the procedure that I had. And um, within the next day or two, I was fine to be out amongst people and um, really no, no physical feeling of being down. I felt fine afterwards. And I, using the exosomes, I think that was the reason I really didn't have a whole lot of um, uh, peeling of the skin or anything afterwards. Um, it was a pretty quick healing process and I'm happy with the results. I wasn't looking for an overnight change. Like I said, I didn't really want a change of my face, but just a freshness. Um, and I'm continuing to notice differences and funny enough, I've never really had any compliments on my skin before. And, um, just about four weeks ago, I saw a friend and she's like, your skin is so beautiful. You know, she just randomly said that in the middle of a conversation. So, so I didn't actually tell her at the time about the procedure, but I just told her that I was doing things to take care of my skin. And, um, I just thought it was quite ironic that I just had the procedure and for the first time, somebody actually commented on that. So, so again, that's, that's my testimony. I would just encourage anybody who's thinking about any application for your life, get the information that you need. Don't waste time in that and move forward so that you can start living your best. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Baito. Well, I uh, appreciate it that input. 
So because of time well spent, people have raising their hands and they have questions. I'm just going to go straight. Um, pretty much we're done. So um, I believe uh, we have a better understanding of platelet-rich plasma and what adult adult stem cell therapy is all about. Again, the goal is to create awareness so that people can reach out to their doctors or if they offer it or find out where they live. If we don't, the worth uh, you know, of a nation can be measured by the health of the people. So we just want to make sure that people understand. You have a stroke, don't write yourself off. You have arthritis, you can't walk, don't wait till it gets to the point you need hip replacement or knee replacement. You can quickly reverse things, get back to your functioning state. The earlier, the better. We don't promise cure. And uh, even if you go to a center that does this anywhere in the world, nobody's going to promise you cure. Please remember that. Yes, you get incremental improvement for each one. Yes, there are some that looks like cure. We just try to avoid that world. You know, we let you choose any word you want to use. Our sickle cell treatment is also treatable, um, but we don't currently do it at our center. Again, the goal is to reduce medical tourism so that Nigerian patients, they want it. The knowledge is available. Um, people all over the, I mean, not many yet, but you can get these treatments, you know, at some centers in, in Nigeria. It's not about us. It's about you. You, Nigerian Nigeria patients, they're worth it. for so you understanding that, you know, you don't have to stress yourself that you can't get visa or to do something. Mind you, it's not for everything. If you need to be treated and you need to be in ICU, you have to be good there. Now, if you're in a coma state or your family member is in a coma state and they've done everything, they can't bring them back. Yes, regency medicine can be added to bring them back quickly. It doesn't replace the general medicine or orthodox medicine. It supplements the current orthodox medicine. So thank you um, uh, for your time. Thank you for staying there um, uh, this long. And if you have uh, more questions or you need to uh, get and uh, read more, you know, the website is address is there. We are located in Lekki phase one. And I'm going to, uh, sorry, I think, um, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Uh, Kola Wale to, you know, to take over. I'm not, I guess, oh, sorry, just a second. All right, so um, over, over to you, Dr. Kola Wale. <laughs> 